so in this video we're going to look at some of the advanced higher chemistry sections and we're going to look at how to calculate the wavelength of light in, a, in the electromagnetic spectrum. So first thing, you'll need your data booklet whenever you're doing any of these calculations and the two pages you'll need is, the first one is the page after the contents page which has got all of the equations that you're given. Um, so the equation that we need for calculating wavelength is the one that contains wavelength, which uh, wavelength is given by this Greek letter lambda. So that's halfway down this page. Uh, later on we'll move on to use the one that's for calculating energy. And then you'll also need the very back page of the data booklet, which has got the, all the physical constants for any of the calculations you'll do in advanced higher chemistry. And then also uh, the multiplication factors table is helpful as well because there's quite a bit of unit conversion involved in this, mostly converting from metres to nanometres, uh, but that tells you basically how many nanometres or how many centimetres are in a metre per versa, so that table is really useful as well. So if we quickly talk about this equation first, so F stands for frequency and that's given in hertz or um, that can be taken as per second as well. And the frequency basically tells you how many waves occur in a one second time period. So if we look at this little graph I've drawn down here, from zero up to the one where I've drawn the green dashed line, there's two waves have occurred. So the frequency would be two hertz or two per second. Um, then we've got velocity, which is just the speed of light in a vacuum, and that's given as meters per second. That's a constant, which you'll find in this page the data booklet, so a speed of light in a vacuum, C, um, and that's 3 times 10 to the 8 metres per second. So that's always in the data booklet for you. And then the wavelength, which is what we're going to try and calculate just now, is given by the Greek letter lambda, and that's, for the purposes of this equation, given in metres. Um, however, you might notice that this question, and usually it, the wavelength is always quoted in nanometres, so we usually have to convert from metres to nanometres at the end of this calculation. So you do need to be very aware of what units are asked for in the questions because you most often do have to convert at some point. Right, so, um, and the wavelength, sorry, is just the distance between the peak of two waves, which I've shown here. So the top of that one to the top of that one. Okay, so if we look at this question then, a beam of light from a sodium street lamp is found to have a frequency of 5.09 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Calculate the wavelength of this light to the nearest nanometer. So the way the equation is just now, it's got frequency equals and I obviously want a lambda equals. So we're just going to do a bit of changing the subject. Go back to your National 5 Maths days. So uh, wavelength is equal to velocity over frequency. Right, so I've done this, swapped F and the lambda around there. Okay, so if we then uh, put in the numbers, and actually it's quite good to write the constants down the side sometimes and pull out the numbers. So lambda is what we're trying to find, so I'll put a question mark next to that. C is the speed of light constant, so that's 3 times 10 the 8 and I like to write the units next to them just to remind myself when I need to convert um, and then the frequency we've been given in the question so 5.09 times 10 to the 14 hertz okay so what we're going to do now is just plug these numbers in so 3 times 10 to the 8 over 5.09 times 10 to the 14. Okay, and then if I plug that into my calculator, my uh, calculator from back in 2003, it's an antique. Uh, so 3 times 2 8 divided by 5.09 Okay, so that comes out as 5.89, and I'll just round it to two decimal places, uh, times 10 to the minus 7. Okay, 
Now that is in meters because the wavelength, eh, the velocity is in meters per second and the frequency is in hertz, which is per second. So when you put this into the equation, and this is quite useful actually for working out units, um, is you can actually plug the units into the equation you've used and then it'll help you work out what your units end up as. So if I take this equation down here, okay, so the units for velocity were meters per second and the units for frequency were hertz, but I'm going to write it as s to the minus one for this uh, reason. Okay, now when you've got equations like this, if there's something on the top of the fraction that's the same as what's on the bottom, you can cancel. So that s minus one cancels with that s minus one. So you end up with just meters. Okay, so that's how you can work out what your units are for what you're calculating, is you can just take the units and plug it in to the equation you've used and cancel anything down. Okay, so because the question has asked for this to be converted into nanometers, we need to use that conversion number. So what we need to do is time multiply this by 10 to the power of nine, because there are a uh, one meter is 10 to the power of nine nanometers. Okay, so all we have to do is do 5.89 times 10 to nine seven times 10 to the nine. Uh, so put that in my calculator. Then it comes out as five eight nine five hundred and eighty nine, and then now that is nanometers. Okay. So that's the bit you have to remember at the end is that your wavelength is going to come out in meters, so you'll need to convert it into nanometers. And to do that, all you have to do is multiply it by ten to minus nine. Eh, sorry, ten to the power of nine because there are 10 to the power of 9 nanometers in one meter.